As we roll into the beginning of the 2024-25 season, there has been one question circling football. Who is going to win the Ballon d'Or this year? Well, the front runner of this award is 21-year-old Jude Bellium, and I'm here to say that Jude Bellium does not deserve the award. Because if we look back just seven years ago, we can see that one of the most infamous English talents of all time was actually twice as good and wasn't nearly as close to touching a golden ball. Yes, I'm talking about Deli Alley. If we go back to the 2016-17 season, Deli Alley was making his rise to the top. At the same age as Jude Bellium, Deli just came off one of his most promising seasons, the 2015-16 year. It was his first real campaign playing in the Tottenham first team, and he had only found a regular spot in the starting 11 halfway through the season. Once he had that opportunity though, he started to ball out at world-class levels and shocked the Premier League with his talent. Glad Chris has tweeted in, does Frank wish he could be as good as Deli Alley? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's better than me when I was 20, that's for sure. Next thing you know, he will, he will go and ask the keeper to give him the ball and run past everyone and score. For some reason, Deli Alley would always find a way to come in clutch and score some very important goals for Tottenham. He did this against Leicester, sitting a crucial draw. He even had a goal and an assist in a 2-0 win over Southampton. Deli Alley just had that clutch factor in him. I'm sure you remember this outrageous volley against Crystal Palace. And this is a perfect example of why his technique was on another level. Once he had bagged five goals and three assists in his first 18 league matches, his potential was recognized by Spurs and he signed a long-term deal with the club until 2021. And that was the real message about how good this kid really was. By the end of the 2015-16 season, he had bagged 10 goals and 10 assists in all competitions and went on to win PFA's Young Player of the Year award. Meaning as he rolled into the 2016-17 season, the best was yet to come. But before I continue, I would please ask that you hit the subscribe button. Return hit 3k subs and it would really help me out. Funny enough, Drew Bellion's rise was quite similar. The year before he made his monumental move to Real Madrid, he was stationed at Borussia Dortmund. The 2022-23 season was Bellion's third in the Bundesliga, and at this point in his career, he was known as an upcoming talent, having broken numerous records the two seasons prior. However, he was yet to have an exceptional season, for when the campaign began to when the campaign ended, Drew Bellingham was shelling out man of the match performances way too frequently for a 20-year-old player. For example, he scored a brace and Stuttgart that kept Dortmund in the race for top four. He scored numerous crucial goals that won games for Dortmund, and without Bellingham, the yellow wall would not have been so close to a Bundesliga title. But when it came to European competition, that was when Drew Bellingham really made his name. Dortmund were eliminated by Chelsea in the round of 16. However, in the group stage, Bellingham was on fire. He had scored a goal for four straight games, including Man City and a double fixture against Sevilla. His contribution toward Dortmund and him being a leader were huge factors in their team performances, and it's crazy to think he was only 20 years old at this time. And there aren't many players that you can say at that age, if any, that you can say he improves every team. I love the way he, he played. He remind me a little bit of Cine uh, Dizidane. Real Madrid obviously have a knack for picking out the world's best talents, which is exactly why they would sign him during the summer transfer window. When I recap the rise of both of these players, it seems like Drew Bellingham has way more potential, but you gotta let me explain. The 2016-17 season from Deli Alley was a work of art. Every single match he played, you would find some way to make an impact. Whether it was weaving in and out of defenders, confusing the goalkeeper, scoring some outrageous goal, or even starting a fight, there was something to see whenever Deli Ali stepped foot on the pitch. It was rare that he would ever play it safe and not try to do the impossible, which is what made him such an exceptional player. He never wanted to play in the lines. In the 2016-17 season, he made his Champions League debut and even scored and assisted two goals in the group stage, before Spurs were eventually eliminated. We saw this coming. But in the Premier League, he was making waves. It took him a few games to score his first goal, but once he got going, there was no stopping this man. He's given the full green light with a consistent spot in the starting 11 and got himself into a generational run of form, especially in January of 2017. We saw Dele Alli score three straight braces against Southampton, Watford, and Chelsea, which alone saw him win the Player of the Month for January. In total, he played 50 games, scored 22 goals, and 9 assists in all competitions, which at 21 years old was still relatively unheard of. Back then, when you heard numbers like this from a cam, you would have thought they were the best in the world, and Dele Alli had the globe at his feet. But how does that compare to Drew Bellingham's breakout season? His rise to the top of La Liga was meteoric, with him scoring in his debut for Real Madrid and finding some consistent goal scoring form. He scored five goals in his first four matches and would score four goals in four straight games in the Champions League. He went on to win the August Player of the Month and continued to destroy La Liga. The performances he was given match in and match out were something never before seen since Cristiano Ronaldo, numbers wise. You have to understand that while Bellingham was probably having the best form in the world, a lot of his goals were tap ins. Being brutally honest, there were not harder goals to score at all, and I think me personally, I'm scoring half of these. However, when it came to his overall gameplay, Drew Bellingham did not slow down for even a moment, and one of his best snippets came when he ended up scoring a brace to help win Dribble El Clasico, and from there, things took a turning point. He he finally started to get the respect he deserved as one of the best footballers in the world at the time. Bellingham won his second play of the month in October and was named the winner of the Copa Trophy just a few weeks later. You'd be a fool to say that he wasn't on track to become one of the best of all time. By the end of his debut season in Madrid, the 21-year-old had scored a grand total of 23 goals and 13 assists in 42 games. Those are some insane numbers and when you compare them to Dele Alli, you would assume that Jude Bellingham is miles better than this low life. But I would argue that you're wrong. Let's take a closer look. Obviously, we look at the fact that Jude Bellingham had won the Champions League, Liga, and Spanish Cup. He's a much better player if we judge off of that. But we can't, because Dele Alli played for Spurs, and Spurs suck. Every Premier League campaign from Spurs reminds me of the kind. 
we have to judge these players off their individual regards. Although, in almost every available metric season by season, Drew Bellingham has better stats, that doesn't make him a better player though. If we start with Bellingham, for example, he scored 19 goals in La Liga, right? But in the overall weighting, according to footystats.com, we can see that Jude had an XG of 16.08 in the 2023-24 season, where Dele Alli had an XG of 14.71 in the 2016-17 season. That effectively tells us that Dele Alli had less clear-cut chances and still managed to score just one goal less than Jude Bellingham. And let me remind you that 9 goals out of every 10 Dele Alli has scored were absolute bangers in one way or another. So statistically speaking, Dele Alli is a more effective goal scorer than Jude Bellingham. That's a crazy statement. When Dele Alli was 21 years old, he had 56 goals to his name after the 2016-17 season, which was his best of all time. And Jude Bellingham at the same age only had 51 goals. We also have to consider he's playing for the most dominant team in Spain and probably one of the best squads in the entire world, while Dele Alli had to play in the 2016-17 Spurs team. But a few stars like Helming Sung and Harry Kane. We can't forget Eric Dyer as well. Hi, I'm Eric Dyer. <laughs> But let's be honest, this team does not touch today's Real Madrid. And with the system Spurs was playing with back then, Dele Alli had to do much more of the work on his own. There was no Luka Modric to send in through balls. There's been very few players that can recreate this type of wizardry on the field, and I'd honestly miss this kind of creativeness from players. Nowadays in today's game, the manager has so much control over how his team plays. But I feel like five, six years ago, there was much more opportunities for players to shine and do their own thing, be creative, and think outside the box. It's just rare that we see that now. We also gotta consider that Dele Alli does not really fit into any rigid system. Like imagine Dele Alli playing under Pep Guardiola. It would be an absolute disaster. Whereas Jude Bellingham can be a role player and really fit into any tactical team. Which makes him a good role player, but you lose that creativity and individual brilliance that, that today's game is missing, like I said. Obviously opinions of football are subjective, but it's up to you whether you agree with me or not. And honestly, I couldn't care less. I personally think that the contributions of players go beyond statistics, and when you consider the circumstances Dele Alli was playing in compared to Jude Bellingham, it makes what Dele Alli did look much more impressive. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'm also prepared for the colossal amount of hate comments I'm gonna get. And while your keyboard warriors are down there, you might as well just drop me a sub. Anyways, as always, I'll see you next week.